Glory to God in the highest saints. Welcome to today's Seed Time and Harvest broadcast. I'm Bishop Hutchinson. I'm so blessed. I'm privileged, honored, and highly favored saints to have this opportunity to come and speak life to you again today. I pray that you are encouraged, that your day is blessed, that you're healthy and happy and whole. And we thank God for giving us this opportunity today to speak with you. Today's topic is trusting God. Trusting God. We're going to be looking at some text of scripture that's going to show us why we can and why we should trust in God. That is in the omnipotent power of God, the omniscience of God, the omnipresence of God, his unfailing love. So these are be going to be some of the things that we're going to speak up to you about today. So I pray that you get your Bible, paper, pencil, be prepared to take notes. I always encourage you to do this because I want you to be able to search the scriptures right along with us to see whether the things that we say are so or not. One of the things that I want everyone to be able to do is take a deep breath and breathe out and 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 just give God a praise. Give God a, a hallelujah that you're able to do just what I asked you to do, to take a breath in and to breathe out. And as you breathe out, I want you to release all your problems, all your cares, all your stress. So as the scriptures say, Lay all your burdens at his feet, for he careth for you. And I want you to keep that in mind right now, that as you release, release whatever pressure, whatever weight, whatever burden, whatever discouragement, whatever sorrow, or maybe you may be bearing a burden for somebody else. I want you to, even just for a moment, I pray you just let God let go completely. But maybe sometimes we're not able to do that. But just for a moment, as we talk about the subject of trusting God, I want you to be able to let go. And I hope these scriptures that we use today will be able to bless you and help you in being able to do so. So if you take a look at our foundational text, today's text for the foundation, we're going to use a scripture from the book of Psalms. Psalm chapter 20 verse 7 will be a foundation text. But there are going to be several other scriptures that I'm going to read and give to you today for you to meditate on as you uh, finish this message. And as you go about your week, we can continue to rely on the Lord. And so here we are. If, you, if you're making notes again, we're going to look at Psalm chapter 20, verse 7. Somebody say hallelujah. It says, some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord, our God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you today for your omnipresence, for you are with us even now. You with each and every person under the sound of hearing of my voice. Your Holy Spirit is present in their atmosphere. Your Holy Spirit abides in them. If those who would like to invite you into their heart, he can come in now. He says, behold, I stand at your heart door knocking. If you let me in, I'll come in. We thank you for your for your omnipotence, O oh God, that you have all power over every situation, every circumstance that pertains to our life. We thank you that you're omniscient, that you know every situation, you know every detail, you know the ending before the beginning. And we thank you today that because of who you are, because you alone are God, and besides you, there is no other God, that we can place our hope, our faith, and I will trust in you. So today, empower us with your word, Father, to trust you for provision, for salvation, for healing, for whatever it is that's needful. And may you be glorified in all we say and all we do. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, saints. Welcome again to today's Seed Time and Harvest broadcast. I'm so encouraged today as I was studying this week's lesson about trusting God. And our foundational text was from an Old Testament scripture, actually from one of the book of Psalms. And if you know anything about the book of Psalms, it is a hymn book. This, we, these were songs of worship and praise. They sang uh, unto God that some trust in chariots and some in horses, but they were celebrating and said, but we trust. And I want you to be able to say, but I trust. I trust in the name of the Lord our God. And why do we trust in the name of the Lord our God? For his name is a strong tower. His name is 
Jehovah. He's the great I am. Hallelujah. He's a deliverer. He's a healer. He's a provider. He's your peace. Hallelujah. And so we trust in the one who is. And is is a present tense word. That means no matter what you're going through right now, he is. And we can trust in him. As opposed to the writer of this text used some trust in chariots. In this context of the Old Testament scripture, chariots represented their power for victory. Horses would also surmount to their ability to conquer their enemies. The writer was saying that some people may trust in these physical uh, attributes, these physical uh, possessions, their own ability to fight against their enemies. He says some people trust in these things. But what about those who don't have chariots or those who don't have horses? So the writer was saying, and some of you may not have all the material things you need. You may not have all the financial things you need. You may not be in any relationships that you want to be in. And, and so some people may be um, enjoying the benefits of having things that you may be lacking of right now. And if you have things, I want you to know, do not put your trust in things. Put your trust in God. For the writer says, some trust in chariots, horses, but we, hallelujah, we trust in the name of the Lord, which is our strong tower. And he's ever present with us, saints of God. And so some, I pray that somebody will be encouraged by this or you can use this message to encourage someone else today. Now let's get a little working definition for the word trust as it relates to this week's message. We use terms oftentimes and perhaps we don't really fully understand what it means. It sounds good to say I trust God. And, and it's difficult for some people to trust uh, if they have never experienced the reliability, the faithfulness of God. That is, you know he's going to come through. You don't know how. But if you've, if you've been young, as the writer says, I believe David said in one of the Psalms, that I've been young and now that I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor see begging bread. So he knew that he had learned to trust God. The Apostle Paul also mentioned several times in the New Testament scripture about how he had been persuaded that neither life nor death, nor things present, nor things to come, nor angels, nor demons, nor height, nor depth, nothing shall be able to separate us. Hallelujah. Because he learned to trust God. And perhaps some of you have learned to trust God. I hope that you do learn to trust God for you can count on him. He's ever present. In all times, in every situation in our lives, saints. So let's look at a working definition for the word trust today. Trust, you can write this down if you like, is firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. Again, trust is a firm belief, not wavering, not wondering, not hoping, but knowing. A firm belief in, listen to what it says, the reliability, the truth, ability, strength of someone or something. In this case of our message today, we trust in the name of the Lord. The name above all names. There is no other name. Acts 4.12 says that man can call upon to be saved besides the name of the Lord. And our Lord is Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Messiah. So we can believe that because he's reliable, saints. As Jesus says in John 10, 10, for I'm the way and the truth and the life. So you see, he's reliable. He's the truth. He has the ability for all power has been given unto him. So if we believe what the word of God says, if we believe that God is who he is, that God can do, what he says he can do, and he has proven it, whether we recognize it or not in our lives, if you're listening to this message, no matter what you're going through, what you've been through, what you may go through, God has keeping power. He's all-powerful, saints of God. 
That means he's more powerful than any other force that comes against you. He's, he has all power above sickness and disease. He has all power over lack and poverty. He has all power over depression and oppression. He has all power. Somebody say he has all power. And I believe it because he is reliable. He is truth. He has the ability and he has the strength to move mountains. Hallelujah. And so that's the context in which this writer from the foundation text we looked at today from Psalm chapter 20, verse 7. He says, some trust in the reliability or the ability of their chariots and some trust in the ability the ability and strength of their horses. But we trust. Hallelujah. Someone say, I trust. I trust in the reliability and the ability and the strength of the Lord. Hallelujah today. Praise the Lord. And so that's one of the texts that talks about trust. And I'm going to give you several other scriptures that you can look at. And I pray that you will uh, take it in context. So I want to go ahead and now and put some of this foundation text um, into the context of what Psalmist says holistically. Now I mentioned to you earlier that the book of Psalms is really a book of songs, a hymn book. Look in your Bible, most Bibles have like a heading at the top of the beginning of the chapters. And, and in this particular case, from the version I'm reading, it says these lyrics are for the director of music. It is a psalm of David or a song of David. David, the one who wrote, who was, who was, uh, is credited with writing the 23rd song, the 27th song. It says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And this is another song of David. The one who slayed Goliath, who says, you come at me with spear and shield, but I come at you in the name, somebody say in the name, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. David had learned to trust in the name of the Lord and be seen the victories that David won, not because of his own strength, but because he trusted in the strength of his God. We can trust in the strength of God as well, saints. We can trust in his truth, his reliability. We don't have to trust in our own strength. For another text says, it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. Today we're talking about trusting God. So let's read this Psalm, chapter 20, starting at verse 1. It says, may the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. Verse 3. May he remember your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. Verse 5. May we shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now this I know. Let's start right there for a minute. For this I know. This is not something I'm hoping for. This is not something I'm trying to, trying to convince myself of. The reason why the writer could encourage the people in their distresses. Why he could encourage them that God of Jacob would protect you. That he would send help for them. That he would grant support for them. Hallelujah. That he would accept their offerings. And that he would give them the desires of their heart. And that all their plans would succeed. He says in verse 6. Now this I know. It reminds me of what the Apostle Paul says in Romans 28. For we know, and I want God, you to be convinced today, saints of God, if you've been through anything in your life, whether you recognize it as God who 
took care of you or strengthened you or encouraged you or helped you or sent someone to to give you a word of advice some super some provision you may have sent through someone or something i want you to recognize this now as god for the writer here says for this i know the lord gives victory to his anointed he answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with victory with victorious power in his right hand and then we get to our foundational text verse 7 some trust in chariots and some in horses but we somebody said but we but we trust hallelujah we have a firm belief saints of god we have a firm belief in god's reliability in god's truth in god's ability and god's strength hallelujah but we trust glory to god in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. Verse 9, Lord, give victory to the king. Answer us when we call. That is Psalm 20, saints of God. You see that the writer had learned to trust in the Lord. He had many experiences in which he had recognized that it, it was only by the grace of God. When he faced Goliath, David that is, he really he remembered when he was watching his father's Jesse's sheep, a lion and a bear came. And he says the Lord gave him strength to, over, to slay the lion and the bear. And so when he confronted Goliath, he remembered that I, I, I can trust in the reliability of the name of the Lord. And so he saw Goliath. He said, I come at you in the name. I'm about to say in the name. In the name of the Lord. For God honors his name above all else. When Moses asked God, when he saw the bush burning, he says, who shall I tell the people sent me? He says, tell them that I am. No matter what you're going through today, I want you to know that God is. He is present. He is able to deliver you. He is able to give you victory for. Again, in verse 6, the writer says, For this I know the Lord gives victory to his anointed. We know that we are those anointed, those who have placed our faith, those who have placed our hope in Christ Jesus. He says in Acts, one and eight. For after you shall after you have received the Holy Spirit, which is the anointing, you shall receive power. Hallelujah, to be His witnesses. Later on in Acts, you will receive power to tread upon serpents. You receive power to cast out demons in my name. Hallelujah. So we are the ones that the Lord gives victory to because we have been anointed without with his power. And this is what the psalmist understood. And so he was encouraging the saints through worship. He penned the letter or penned the words to the psalm that we're now reading. Imagine the praise and the excitement and the exuberance with which these songs were saying in worship unto our God. Worship means to ascribe worth to God. And so it wasn't about David. It wasn't about the temple. It wasn't about the sanctuary. Every one of these words in the scriptures was about God. They were magnifying him. They were exalting him. Talking about his great exploits and all the wonderful things he's done. Today, saints of God, I want you to know, just as David learn to trust God. I pray that through whatever situations you're going through, you've been through, or you may go through, that you can trust in the Lord as well. For he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not. Somebody say, I'm trusting God. Hallelujah. For he is reliable. He has truth. He has strength, and he has ability to deliver, to save, to heal, to provide, to do whatever is necessary. On my behalf. And I thank you Lord. That I can trust you. 
So some of us may have trust issues with other people. They may have let us down. We may have placed our hope and our belief that they were going to do what they said they can do. And maybe some of some of people may have tricked you or done you wrong. Some people, they, they, they had to ask for forgiveness because they just didn't have the ability to do what they thought they could do. But God is not like a man that he should repent. For God is faithful. This is why we can trust in saints of God. Hallelujah. So if you can share that disappointment, that loss, that hurt that you may have experienced from someone or some person who may have let you down. There's another text that we'll probably look at later says, put not your trust in man. Hallelujah. Don't, don't, don't put your belief in the reliability, the ability, the strength of man or woman. Put your trust in God. Hallelujah. Let's look at some other scriptures here, saints. God, I pray you're being blessed today. We're talking today about trusting God. Let's take a look at a couple other scriptures real quick that I want to tell you as you meditate upon these texts. And you can go back to the word of God and see all the things that we're giving you where you see those that, that have depended and placed their hope in, in God. Make note of this, Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. We see where it reads, the Lord spoke to Joshua and said, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord will be with you wherever you go. That may be some encouragement for somebody today. For the Lord says, he has commanded you, in the case of Joshua, to be strong, to be courageous, to not to be afraid, not to be discouraged. Some of us may not feel strong right now. Some of us may not feel courageous. Some of us may actually be afraid or maybe we are discouraged. But here's the reason why we can trust in God. This, and this is what we should trust God for. We should trust God for his strength, for his power. For he has not given us spirit of fear, but power and love. And he has given us a sound mind. He has given us that thing. So we must turn to him to receive what he has given us. For the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. Whether to the courthouse, whether to the jailhouse whether to the White House, whether to the outhouse, no matter where you go, the Lord your God will be with you. You are not alone. And this is how we, we should. And I pray that we will be able to. I pray that the Holy Spirit will, will work in us and through us as we speak and meditate upon these portions of Scripture that He will stir up your faith to trust God. Let's look at a let's look at a couple more scriptures. It says, Second Samuel seven twenty eight. It says, Sovereign Lord, you are God. Your covenant, or your word, is trustworthy, and you have promised these good things to your servant. We can look at Psalm chapter nine verse ten. It says, Those who know your name, trust in you. For you, Lord, have never, somebody said never, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Psalm 13, verse 5 says, But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation, not my salvation, because our victory comes through the Lord. Hallelujah. He will fight our battles for us. We just have to trust in the name of the Lord. Like David did when he faced Goliath. He trusted in the name. Hallelujah, somebody. Talking about trusting God. He trusted in the name of the Lord. He understood it. He had a God that was with him. He had a champion that would fight for him. Psalm 31, 14 says, But I trust in you, Lord. I say... You are my God. Hallelujah. Psalms 56 and 3 says, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. 
Psalm 84, 12 says, Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Are you one today, saints of God? Are you one of the blessed who trust in him? This may be a familiar one with a lot of people. Psalm chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, which says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. These are all scriptures that's coming from the book of Psalm and the Old Testament text. But we can also look in the New Testament text where this trust is still the same thing that we can do today. Look at Romans chapter 15 verse 13. It says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. So that you may overflow with hope by the power of of the Holy Spirit. So you see, saints, this is not an Old Testament concept. It's not just a New Testament concept. It is a present day reality for each and every one of us who can place our trust in God. And I pray that as we meditate upon these scriptures, as you go back and look at these texts in your Bible, pray and ask God to give you his strength because it's not your strength that's going to give you the victory. It's his strength. It is not those that you may be trusting in. It's not the, it's not the bank. It's not the doctor. It's not the lawyer. It is the one who gives you victory. His name is, is the Lord. Almighty. He's our God. We can trust in him. And I pray today that as you... Allow these words as you open up your heart to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you, to, to build you up where you're weak, to strengthen you where you're torn down, that you will allow God to do that and that you can look at these scriptures and understand why you can do it. For again, the writer says in our text, he says that for this I know. I'm a witness as well, saints of God. Many tribulations, trials, tests, storms, but we still hear. But we still speaking forth the words of God. Still believing in the reliability, the truth, the strength, and the ability of our God. For he is a strong tower. And he is ever present with us. As he spoke to Joshua in the text that we looked at. For I'll be with you wherever you go. Father, we thank you today for your unfailing love. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for your reliability and your ability. And we thank you for your strength to deliver us, to give us victory, to give us hope, to give us success. And we thank you, Lord, that we can be aware, made more aware even today, of your abiding presence with us wherever we go, even right now, wherever we are, wherever the listeners are, you're with them. No matter what nation, no matter what kindred, tongue, or tribe, no matter what state, you're with them. And wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, there's deliverance, there's freedom. Hallelujah. So today, Father, we acknowledge you. We thank you for your power and your ability. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to come before your presence today. Help us to trust and rely on you. For you alone are God. And besides you, there is no other God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.